So we're going to start with a DevCS project already in place and we're going to create a new Git repository in this project to host our new function. So we'll just give it a name and create an empty repository with just a readme file. Once the repository is created, we can copy the URL to clone it directly from here. Just click this icon. Now let's go over to our terminal, make sure that we have fn installed with the correct version. And then we're going to create a directory for us to work in, switch into this directory. And then um, we're going to clone the Git repository into this directory, so we would have this connected to our cloud. Next, we're going to um, go into the directory we created by cloning and use the fn command to create a new function. So we're going to create a new go function we're going to call it shyfunk and once it's created there's a directory that was created for us we can go into the directory and inside it we would see uh, three files that make up our function now we're ready to um, add those files and directory into our git repository we'll do an add we'll do a commit of the code and then we'll push the code which would bring it into developer cloud service and now our code is in the git repository in the cloud so let's switch over to our browser and refresh the page would now show us the new directory in our git repository and the files in the directory. Great, so the next thing we want to do is automate the build of those functions and the build and the deploy. So the first thing we're going to do is in our function interface console we're going to create a new application, give it a name, my go up, and just create this application. This application right now doesn't have any functions in it, you can see it's empty here. Over here you have the instructions on how to get started uh, from a command line. We're going to also leverage similar commands directly from inside our build script in developer cloud service. So let's go over and create a new build job and I'm going to copy some definitions from an existing build job simply to save me from having to type those. Um, and you can see that this build job is based on a docker build VM. So this is a VM that has the Docker software already installed on it. We're going to hook this build job into our Git repository and automatically invoke the build job whenever there's changes. First step in the build job, login into our Docker registry, the OCIR. Next, connect uh, with information to our OCI instance and then the specific information for the function. So this is where we can copy some information directly from our getting started. Okay, so for example, let's copy this over here. And of course, make sure that your profile is Oracle and the passphrase that you used. Next, we're going to use a build command. Um, our function is inside the directory, so let's give the name of the directory here. And then a deploy command where we're going to specify uh, the new application we created. And again, the directory that the function that we want to deploy is in inside our Git repository. And now we're ready to build and run this job. So this job is going to run, it's going to be picked up by one of our build executors and we can track it looking at the log window. And over here you can see we have um, initially the getting the code from the git, then connecting to our docker repository, then we're going over and actually doing the build and then there's going to be a deploy step. And if you inserted all the information correctly as shown in the blog, you will have success. So now we can switch back to look in our function console. And 
and we can see the new function has been added to our application. Okay, now we can see the information about the function here. Next we're going to show you that now this process is automated, so if we go into our Git repository and we're going to edit the logic of our function. Okay. A developer cloud service actually lets you do it directly from the web interface. You can, of course, check out the code and do it from any ID you want. We're just going to switch the message that we're showing it uh, for this function right here. And then we're going to commit the changes into our Git repository. We'll give a meaningful commit message and commit the changes. Since the Git repository is hooked up to the build, we can now see a build has been initiated for us to pick up the changes we made into the master branch and redeploy them. So the build is going to run and execute over here, picking up the new version, connecting and deploying the application into our um, function as a service in the Oracle Cloud. Once the build finished, we can switch over again into the function console and we can see our function is still here. And to make sure that this function works, we're actually going to invoke the function from our terminal. So, we're going to again copy some information about the context in which we're going to work, so to map to the context in the cloud. So I'm going to copy these two lines and execute them, setting up information for the context we're using right now. And then one more line that maps us to the specific user we're currently using, like that. We can use a list context command to see the definition of the context we're now using. Okay, that's the first line here. And now we can just invoke the function directly in this context. So we're going to use the fn invoke command, give the name of our application, and then give the name of the function. This goes to the cloud, execute the function in our cloud, and returns the value. 